I am the second born child of my family. I had my primary school education, University of Lagos Women's Society, Nigerian Primary School. And I finished in 2010. I then moved to International School in Badon, University of Badon, for my secondary school, which I finished in 2016. I did a one year foundation program then because I was too young to enter university. And then I got admission, professional admission to the University of Lagos. And that's my background. I gained my admission in the Department of Civil and Environmental Engineering. Yeah, at the time, it was a childish motivation because I was young. I looked around me and I found out that um, I really liked mathematics, so I wanted to do engineering. And in specializing in what field of engineering, I looked at what I thought to be the most lucrative field then as a young person. And I felt civil engineering was it. Um, well, when it's when it was confirmed that it was a five point, I was excited. I told my parents, um, I told my friends, and just had little chats and celebrations on it. During the process of getting the five point, it was because I really didn't aim to finish the five point. I wanted to. Honestly, I wanted to work hard in university. I heard that University of Lagos was very hard. I heard if you finish the first class, you and Albert Einstein are like guys. Because I thought it was going to be so hard. So my primary motivator then was to just work hard and see where it would lead me to. And then I had a five point the first time. And that's the challenge of having a five point the first time. The next thing is can you maintain it? So it was more of working to maintain it during the process than a celebratory um, tone. It was when I finished that I said, yeah, congratulations to you. never really occurred to me that way because um, because I mean a five point is very fragile if you get one B that's the end so it wasn't ever it was a do or die five points I my aim when I entered school was 4.5 my super aim was 4.7 so I always told myself if I lose five points, that's fine because I'm doing far beyond what I expected to do um, but I, I planned per semester, so I just looked at the next semester and said, okay, if we have nine courses, let's try to get nine A's next semester. But by 400 level, 2020, when COVID hit and school was shut down, it was really a tough time. I started considering what, I mean, nine months strike, you start to consider whether you really want to spend your time waiting endlessly for when um, federal government and ASO will resolve. Um, and at that time, one of the primary reasons I stayed back was because of my CGPA. And I said, you know what, let's push it. Let's try and finish as the overall best graduating student. Oh yeah, do a lot. <laughs> um, I think one is engineering drawing. I'm not good at drawing. I, I never practiced or tried drawing, which is why I didn't improve at it. And in my GC in 2015, I actually had F9 in technical drawing in WIAC, I had CISIC. And so when I came into university, fresh um, 200 level, my plan then was to maybe just get around the BAC or drawing, just try my best, because that wasn't my fault. But I put, again, it was 200 level, and I put so much effort in it. I used to practice from like 9 to like 2 a.m., 9 p.m. to like 2 a.m. to try and finish the assignment every single day with mosquitoes and I actually got better at drawing. I got better at drawing. I, I did the first test and I noticed that, I mean, there were four questions that couldn't answer two. I did the second test, there were four questions that could answer like three and a half. I did the exam, there were four questions that I finished. So I could see that I got better with practice. And well, I just thought I got an A. It was so mind blowing for me then because I was bad at drawing. Um, so yeah, that was one course. Another was engineering thermodynamics, you know, also in 200 level. Now, I studied engineering again because I like mathematics and I, I made the mistake of thinking if you like mathematics you should come and do engineering and when I saw the calculations in engineering thermodynamics I was like what this is not what I signed up for it was so off everything I've been doing the mathematics I was familiar with was the father is 10 years old today his son is this how old they be in 10 years those kind of logical questions I like them but the calculus that was involved in thermo I was 
I mean, I was taking a bath, and I had, I remember, I had, um, I think, 44 and in my exam, and 26 in my CA. So, like, I just borderline 70. It was just on the dot that I hit that 70. And I think the third course would be fluid mechanics, if I could go on that. Um, so, I already had, like, I was already in five points when I did fluid mechanics. I heard from my seniors that it was a top course, it was a three unit course. That was the only course I went to buy a physical textbook for. I spent all money to buy a textbook. I got a lot of jotters because I knew I wanted to balance on this particular course. So the test came, it was very good. I got almost everything in the test. The labs came, I was very good. I had very high CA. But I knew that if the CA was easy, <laughs> the exam was going to be tough. And the man didn't, the man didn't disappoint. The exam was really tough. I looked at the first question. Second question, nothing. Third question, nothing. I started to wonder that what's going on here. I looked around in the exam room and everybody knew nothing. So I was like, okay, that's fine, that's fine. Then I did the fourth question. I, I knew that one. When I left the exam, <laughs> one of my strategies in school was, see, if you don't know anything, still put something down. Because no lecturer marks an empty script. It's just impossible that a lecturer looks at an empty script and gives you one mark for it. But if you put, even if it's what is not so um, intellectually accurate, there's a tendency that somebody looks at what you wrote and says, you know, well, some, for some effort. So I just looted a lot of knowledge I had on the course because I did a lot of practice. And I thought when the man was marking my school, my script would be like, what rubbish is this boy writing? Um, the results came out. <laughs> the CAs looked like they were graded. Properly. The exams looked like it was over 35 and it was over 50. It was that bad. Um, I was at work then, in, so I was doing an internship in 200 level. And I, I prayed to God after the exam that if I get an A in this particular course, I was going to shave my head, everything on my head. As I saw the results, it was 42 in the CA, over 50, and 28 in the exam, I was 70. And I shouted in the office. My boss was wondering what was going on with this young guy. I came back from work that day and I went to meet my brother. And I took it off. Now that was just funny stuff I was doing, but yeah, I remember that course was tough. I stayed in school hostel. Mm, so I, I spent a lot of my time doing social impact and I co-founded a club, Sustainable Development Advocates, um, a club that advances the SDGs. I was also the welfare secretary of my department. I, I did a lot of those kind of stuff and I struggled to balance it because I mean school takes a lot of time and social impact too takes a lot of time if you want to actually make impact in society. So I think I faced the challenge of trying to balance, especially with time and all the engagements I was working with. I think that was a major challenge I faced outside of academia. Okay, so the Million Fellowship was, I think, it was the first project we worked on at SDA. At the time, University of Lagos, there had never been a Million Fellow cohort. So we had to work from like hostel to hostel, literally, to get people to apply, because you need a minimum number of people to apply for your university to be considered. And so that was one of the first projects we did. I remember speaking at Mary Hall Week, <laughs> and the boys in Mary were booing us, because, I mean, people want to hear music during whole week not the lecture about applying for union fellowship um but yeah i enjoyed it because i think if you do those kind of activities you get better stories to tell and you get like experience that you can build upon um just before i entered 200 level after my foundation program i did one uh, it was really under it was under somebody he was working on a construction project and i was just like under him learning how to use like autocad and stuff um my 200 level i worked at advanced engineering consultant as an intern for three months um for when covid hit i worked with a professor on campus he was working on like construction projects on campus professor Ipomosa, so i was his this is boy um in my 400 level um, student industrial work experience scheme, I worked at Morgan Monto and Abbey for six, four months. Now that was a full, proper, solid internship. I think finally, I, I worked at African Research University Alliance um, in my 500 level.
So for for the earlier ones, I did them to gain an understanding of what civil engineering was about. Um, again, I was young when I chose civil engineering. I didn't know what it was about. So I used that to actually gain an experience. And when like concepts are being taught in class, usually I could build on some experience with, oh, this is what a column is, this is what a beam is, this is how a beam would bend, this is um, what a dam is, this is what a drainage is, this is why we treat water and so on and so forth. I could understand based on some experience I had. Um, at the later stages, it was more of it was more balancing because when I was working at Africa Research University Alliance, I was also a student, I was also doing social impact, so it was just more balancing three of them together. Ah, uh, yes, I did. I actually had bad luck with scholarships, that's what I tell myself. Because before I entered school, um, I had a mentor, Bolaji Lawal, who, who was, I mean, who I'm very grateful to. I, I honestly believe that if I didn't speak to Bolaji Lawal, before I entered university or gained admission to university, I would not be having this interview today. So he, he took me through how university works. He gave me materials. He, he gave me some teachings and trainings too. And, and um, he told me about the importance of scholarships, which brings me back to your question. So I knew that there were scholarships and I wanted to apply for them. So I applied for a lot at the start of my 200 level. I never got selected for, not even the test. I couldn't even get the test, never. I'm talking about like 20 applications. So I even used to ginger people to apply, all my friends, and they would get the test and I wouldn't. And it was a bit disturbing because I was only five points. I couldn't see the reason why I shouldn't even get a test to even try and demonstrate my abilities. But at the 21st try, I got um, an invite to a test, um, Snapco Shell Scholarship, Shell Nigeria Scholarship, and I got the scholarship, so yes, I did get that. I also got um, the OUAI, Oxford Union Lag Alumni Initiative Scholarship. I won some prizes that they give yearly for convocation, best students in a particular level. Um, I got a scholarship from my fellowship. I'm also on the University Endowment Fund. Yes, yes, I do. I do. I'm, I'm, I'm big on role models, on having like reference points because I believe that whatever goal anybody sets, whatever ambition or aspiration that anybody wants to achieve, there's a likelihood that someone has had it before. And sometimes you may be lucky, those people have achieved those goals. You don't lose anything by just asking them how they did it. Anything I want to do, I just ask, how did you do it? To gain like a guide. And so, first day I entered university, I went to look for the best student to deliver above me. And I told her, hi, I'm David. I want you to teach me how you, you got to where you were. And um, that was she, I did with me. She guided me to on school. She taught me some stuff. She was my sugar mommy. So by sugar, I mean like educational sugar, not any other thing. Um, I also had Taiwadi B, who was more, well, I say pragmatic on how to, um, go about school, was very big on social impact. He was also one of the co-founders of SDA with me. So it was very strategic about um, balancing school and academics, uh, sorry, school and other activities and work. So he taught me some, will I say, OT, like the 414 on how to go about university. Um, yeah. So those two people. Well, I wouldn't say I got information on how to navigate school for my lecturers, but I had some good experiences in my lecturers, like my supervisor, who was very supportive. It was, it was easy to approach. If you had a problem, he would help you out. He would walk you, but he would help you out. I also did an internship with my um, former HOD, Professor Ekomosa, and yeah, he, he also took me under his wing. He gave me problems to solve to ensure that I, like, I develop as, a, as an engineer. Um, it's difficult to tie it to like something. I'll say I'm big on good. Like I just want to see improvement um, every year. I'm very big on problem solving and contributing like to society to actually make impact. Um, so whatever I'm doing, whatever field I end up jumping into, currently I'm in consulting. 
I want to make an impact in that particular field. I want to be relevant to society. Yes, that's my long-term plan. Um, I'm a consultant and essentially consulting, uh, management consulting, and essentially you solve the problems of companies, c suite executives, CEOs, CFOs, CMOs, CTOs, the challenges that they have that you don't have time to solve. Um, so it could be um, growing their business, it could be, it could even be in the public sector, you want to increase the literacy rate of girls in a particular state, so on and so forth. So we work on, on those kind of projects. Yes, it is. It's, it's something that's um, strong at the back of, of my mind. Um, but like, let's see how it goes. I'm, I am interested in furthering my education. I like learning and I don't, I, I will reject the opportunity to learn at the postgraduate level. Uh, but let's see how it goes here. Yeah. Um, currently, it's, it's, it's work because I'm currently working. Uh, I'll see how I could. I'll see, I'll see. Currently, at this moment, I really just want to work. Like, that's what I'm just doing. And if the opportunity arises where I can further my studies, then it's something I'll consider. His name is Professor James Akom. Uh, he, he lectured me on introduction to civil engineering, 200 level. Lectured me on engineers in society, 200 level. Lectured me on environmental engineering twice, two environmental engineering courses in 500 level. So yes, he did lecture me. Um, well, I think he's happy. If you, if you do, I, I think the goal of every parent with their children is for them to see their children succeed and become something. Um, so yes. My father is not as expressive about his joys, but I know in, in his heart he'll be excited that his son is the very best graduating student. Oh, and my mom is very expressive about her joy, so she was very elated. Yeah. I would, I would start off by saying they should read my book, Roadmap to 5.0. I'm launching it in February 2024, February 3. Um, I, I really just went all out in explaining how to, how I did it and I also work so that it's not just a limited perspective of somebody in Unilago in engineering. Um, secondly, very important, if you have the goal to finish with a high CGPA, people have set those goals before, some of them have achieved it, reach out to them and ask for help. Things like um, working with past questions, things like just the diligence and dedication in studying very regularly every day having a set time where you want to um, focus on your studies. I think those are important things. I think it's good to have a good community of friends around you. If you have friends that don't share the same goals with you, it can be difficult for you to sustain motivation when things are low and like times are down. I'd also say is apply for scholarships as early as you can. School can get very hard. And if you have like that extra cash somewhere, it can make you, can give you an incentive to pursue your academics. So those kind of strategies but again, uh, you should check out more of them in my book. <laughs>